So to put this next session into the context of the picture, um, this, 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 this session really is about this understanding that the great latent resource, uh, which when everybody talks about how do you make the £30 billion gap smaller and how do we sort that, the great latent resource is having a profoundly different relationship with the people who use our services and indeed the citizens in the communities uh, where our services sit. And, uh, and I was... Uh, um, two, two very brief sort of uh, uh, stories before I introduce Yvonne to introduce the, uh, the video from New York is... Um, one, um, if you look at the value of technological innovation and models of value, what you find, if you, if you looked about 65 years ago, about the same time the NHS was created, the mainframe computer emerged for the first time. And it was probably about the size of this room and did basic mathematical tasks. Now, as the value of that instrument sort of declined, it was taken up by the creation of a, the personal computers. And then, similar as that declined, we had the laptop. And then the things that we now have on our wrists, etc., and probably built into our clothing in the future. But actually, what's added most value to technological advances around computing has been the engagement of, of users of that in using those technologies for benefit. So alongside that kind of, that kind of wave pattern of, of more value and then decline has been an exponential value curve, which has been about users engaging with technology. The point being in healthcare, we've had exactly the same kind of story of, of the value uh, of technological change. So from from long-stay asylums to community mental health care, from uh, 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 stroke care everywhere to, to scanners and things. So we've done our mainframe to laptop changes. We've changed our structures, we've got value. The bit that's missing in healthcare is that we've never got that value-added piece that you can see in computing from the people who were using those technologies, taking them on, understanding them, and creating even more value as a consequence. So that's the first bit. The second bit is... We're going to go on to talk later about um, the opportunity of capitation-based approaches, very much at the centre of the five-year forward view. Um, if you look at uh, the early work evaluating accountable care organisations in the United States, they will say that those who've struggled are those who thought that just bringing all their organisations together but not changing their model of care would do it. So that's the first thing. And secondly that very, very few of the ACOs, even the ones who are successful, have managed really to change the relationship, despite the fact they talked about being population health management organisations, with the people who they were supporting. So largely a different way of delivering to people rather than find that value. So the evidence is emerging that if we do the five-year forward view type of ideas of new models of care, primary, secondary care, integration, health, social care, but you don't connect differently to the people who use our services, we will not get the real benefits. So this is a hugely important session. We're going to have... Uh, Yvonne's going to introduce a video from New York, which I won't say more about, and then we're going to look at some really interesting research uh, from uh, uh, the Innovation Unit talking to people about their views on these things. I'll let John uh, and, uh, and Jane uh, talk about that later. So, Yvonne, over to you. So um, when, we were, uh, when, when we were doing this work with the Commission, we uh, had a lot of contact with New York. Uh, and uh, during one of those contacts, Linda Gibbs, who was the, at that time the Deputy Mayor of New York, uh, she just uh, worked with uh, Mayor Bloomberg, uh, and she headed up the Health and, Social, uh, um, uh, Health and Human Services Directorate, which is huge, which we actually met the Commissioner for. Um, and previously had a track record on homeless. She was a homeless commissioner, and she's a lawyer by background, but absolutely gets this thing about connecting the city with the people. So she was very instrumental in age-friendly New York, and she was very instrumental in Take Care New York, which is the big programme where you know, the city got a big ambition for health, which was very much a public ambition and accounted to the public. So, so Linda's great. She's now um, a, a, she's a principal with Bloomberg Associates on the social services side. So she's kept that kind of fervor going on an international basis. She would love to have been here today. Uh, she's traveling at the moment. So we thought we'd get a video which she made for us. So I think that's probably enough from me to introduce this, about eight minutes long, and then we can reflect 
afterwards. So over to Linda. Hello, London. Um, this is Linda Gibbs here from New York. Really pleased um, to join you um, through this video and really, really excited about your report. You did a great job. It's um, just chock full of a ton of really great recommendations and I think really, really promising in terms of the work that's to come. And um, that's a little bit of um, some of my reaction that I want to share with you today. Um, I think by the time, um, you know, I, I read through and um, when I read one after the other after the other recommendations, I thought there were so many good things there. By the time I got to the end, I already started to worry, how are you going to put the management together to make all of this happen? And how are you effectively going to communicate the most important pieces out to your community such that you can get all of those partners engaged that you need to have engaged if you're going to be successful in implementing these things. And so in a way, one of the last recommendations becomes the most important, and that is for the creation of a health commissioner. I think in that uh, recommendation, what I read is the desire to have a permanent um, individual who is representing the mayor in the city to be the advocate on behalf of public health for the city and on behalf of good health for all the citizens of London. And, um, and that, I think, is a really key recommendation so that there is one person clearly accountable for making sure everything happens. Not that that one person has to do everything, but you need that key driver who's going to make all of this happen for the mayor, and not just for this mayor now, but for future generations so that you have that point of accountability, that point of advocacy present in the city. So I think if I had to rank them all, that comes up pretty close to the top for me as among the recommendations. And then the other piece that was there was the recommendation that there be a citywide plan that articulates the top goals. And in a way, uh, what that plan I think needs to do is to identify of these many dozen recommendations, which ones are the ones that are most important for your citizens to hear and to participate in actively in the way that they conduct their lifestyles, and which ones are the most important for your frontline general practitioners and clinicians to embrace most wholeheartedly as they engage citizens in their health care. And so what I equated that to that I think was so important in New York City was our Take Care New York plan. We only targeted 10 top priorities and we organized all our messaging for our communities around those priorities. So we did it at, that, at a citywide level, but then we broke it down and we replicated that report for each of our 59 community districts. And in a way, as you think about what your public health campaign and engaging citizens, I think having that kind of very simple high level document that presents the basic goals and does it at a community level so that it enables the local providers, local community groups, and citizens, you know, the, the, our, the, our clients, our, our citizens, uh, you know, Londoners themselves to engage in a practice of healthy lifestyle of the sort that you want. So communicating those high level goals. And then lots of things that are otherwise individual recommendations in the plan can fall in under that. And um, I love the recommendations around using some of the um, resources that are available to the mayor's office to encourage people for act, active, live, active living, act, active um, um, lifestyles. And so thinking about active design, what do your streets look like? What do your office buildings look like? And anything you can do to reinforce the messages to the public um, for using those opportunities to keep moving as an important part of their healthy lifestyle. In a way, I thought that one point was where you really reflected the importance of public communications and public relations in communicating these messages. I would look for more opportunities other than just that, um, that active living and, and, and walking in particular, um, but it was really important. Just in the way our calorie posting in New York City was an important signal to send out to citizens that how much you consume at your takeout restaurant is influencing your health. So think about it, look at it, be informed by it, think about it. And so promotion on active, um, active lifestyles, calorie posting, what are more opportunities like that to send the messages in the community? 
Another piece that I thought really ran through um, your recommendations were very much about how your general practitioners and frontline clinicians were providing healthcare services and what you can do to reorient them toward the more holistic and preventive healthcare. You also had recommendations on electronic health records. One lesson we had in New York City when we created an electronic health record for our low-income community clinicians was not just that we wanted to give them that tool, that electronic health record, but we hardwired into that tool best practices around what should each checkup of each client who's coming in, each, each um, patient who's coming in, you know, what are the routine checkups that are right at this point in time for those individuals. So by giving them the electronic health record with that hardwired in, it prompted them toward best practices that they weren't otherwise doing as clinicians. And so it improved, we had great improvements in terms of just the number of routine checkup activities that ought to be conducted, um, sort of much higher rates of that, um, those activities happening. Um, but then what it did, was, which was really great, was that it gave us a chance to really monitor baseline and monitor progress in communities and to see the outcomes for the patients in the various settings and understand who was doing better by their patients, which patients were adopting better practices. And then it allowed us also to go in and think about quality improvement activities in those places where the numbers were lagging behind which then led to incentive programs where we could actually work with the um, payment structure to incentivize providers around those practices and draw their attention to it in a way that perhaps just having the best practice tool there wasn't working. So all thinking about how your electronic record recommendations might be used to help in that transformation of what the frontline practice um, of your local clinics are is an opportunity that's there and expressed in your goals. And then the, the last point that I would make that I think is a um, is really important lesson that we learned was how valuable it was to reach out to non-traditional partners. The, and I think I mentioned this back when, um, in the spring when I visited the launch of, of your commission. The um, biggest, second largest contributor to life savings in New York City was actually the partnership that grew out of our conversation with folks in climate change and environmental health. And so th that conversation gave rise to an air monitoring system. The climate change people with all the knowledge about what was driving pollution came up with the mechanisms to bring those numbers down. <coughs> and then the health partnership was the way that we actually track the impact in terms of people's health and we were able to determine that second to smoking only the changes in air quality that came out of that partnership um, were uh, ge generated more life savings than any other initiative and so that would not have happened as effectively if we didn't have that partnership that we developed with our climate change folks. So reaching out to partners that aren't naturally in the group of people that you think of as public health advocates. Um, most of all, I think with this entire initiative is that it, um, it is just a fabulous set of recommendations um, that offer great promise to the, um, to the city and, um, and with a health commissioner to lead the charge and this setting the stage for, um, for the future generations to come, just a fabulous, fabulous product. Thank you. So we have, uh, we have an endorsement there from New York, but also I think some very practical things that she was mentioning in the context of this next discussion, idea of commissioners as advocates, the uh, connecting to people around their whole life experience, not just their narrow acute health experience, um, uh, how the, the connection to a grander purpose can be reflected in local communities. So I, I think lots to think about. So we're going to move from that, Yvonne. We're going to move into uh, hearing from uh, people closer to home. And I'm going to introduce uh, John Craig, who is the managing partner at the Innovation Unit, and also uh, Jane Barnacle, who's the Regional Director of Patients and Information at NHS England, to come and join us on stage. And uh, John, you're going to take us through some voices, I think, from rather closer to home. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm John Craig. I co-lead Innovation Units. We're an independent non-profit. We work as an innovation partner to public services, developing radically different, better, lower-cost public solutions. One more bit of inspiration from the US. 
Woodrow Wilson, the 28th President of the United States, said that ear of the leader must ring with the voices of the public. Uh, you are the leaders. And in, the, in a minute, we're going to hear a bit more uh, from the public. They are patients and service users who know less about health and care systems than you. Uh, and as Stephen Dorrell implied, they are your constituents. And this session is both about what they say about their experiences of health and care systems and the insights you can generate from listening to them. Uh, people said to the L London uh, Health Commission that they wanted primary care to be proactive, coordinated and accessible. Uh, people in the film talk about the customization of services, the nature of their relationships with health and care professionals, and integrated care within health and care services and beyond. And the uh, London Healthcare Commission has recommended uh, that we support self-management, even self-prescription, and do more to tailor services to patients. Um, those questions again, what, what, what insights can you generate from the film about how we connect with and communicate with uh, patients and citizens? And what does it make you want to change about their experience or our provision and strategy. There are some tools on your table to help you. There are some profiles of the people featured in the film. And there's a bit of a framework to help you map some of the insights that you generate. Uh, and we will come back in 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> To move us into our final session, um, we, we, again, we, we captured your roundtable discussions and we'll put, pick up those really practical points that you've had, the insights that you created uh, around your table, and we'll, we'll play them back into the thinking about how you make things happen. I, I, I can't leave that session without again stressing that if there's one you know people search for the magic bullet and talk about genomics and uh, and everything as though it's going to change the world the thing that seems to me will change the world is that different relationship uh, with people both for their, their own care and indeed with our services as citizens so I, I really don't want to leave that session although we won't kind of summarize what you said uh, without saying that a hugely important bit of today I think uh, and indeed in implementing uh, both a five-year forward view uh, the London Health Commission and having sustainable services.